Hey folks, welcome to Automotive Technica. So in this video, I'm going to show you the diamond antenna for ham radios X50 and uh, the frequencies is at VHF 144 megahertz and 430 megahertz. So these uh, antenna which are 2 meter band and uh, the VHF band uh, come up with an VW VSWR of 1.5 and uh, this is at uh, the gain if you see it is 4.5 dB at 144 megahertz and 7.2 dB at 430 megahertz which is the UHF frequency. So 4.5 dB at VHF and uh, 7.2 dB at 430 MHz which is UHF frequency. Now what that is mean that this antenna supports dual bands and it is very difficult to construct a dual band antenna in uh, UHF as well as VHF uh, uh, radios. So this antenna if I measure it the distance is approximately 5 feet and uh, these actually come from Japan. Nowadays you get some of uh, the antennas which I have seen uh, from Taiwan as well but this is original from Japan. So if you see the antenna, this is a fiberglass it looks like and I didn't open it, I am going to unbox it. That is a holder and uh, this will sit on the base with the three radials. So there are three radials and uh, two clamps and there is a base uh, where you can connect the UHF connector SOC. So I'm going to unbox it now. So folks, uh, when I open this box, I got the holding pipe, and uh, this goes to the bottom of uh, the antenna. It's here, and I have two U clamps, and in this you can use uh, 1.5 inches to uh, 1 inches uh, GI pipe or any kind of a pipe where it is strong enough. There is an Allen key. There are two uh, aluminium holders where it holds the pipe and this go on to your uh, main mast and there are three radials. The radials has got uh, the nuts and these are uh, made up of uh, stainless steel. So all these items are made up of stainless steel except the clamps. These clamps are aluminium and this is the antenna. So this antenna if I show you at the base there's a connector, UHF connector, even uh, it's a female one, and uh, you need to use uh, the male connector either LM213 or LM400 based on your needs. So, folks, the actual length of the antenna when I measure it is approximately 59.5 inches, approximately 151 uh, centimeters, and uh, if you see approximately, it's 5 feet. Yeah, uh, so that's uh, uh, the approximate size is 5 feet, but uh, if you see actual length is uh, 151 centimeters and in inches it is 59.5. So folks, so we have an input connector which is UHF female and uh, the spec is SO239 and you need a cable which is RG213 or uh, LM400. Uh, which are thick enough are difficult to handle but they should be connected with uh, uh, PL259 so this is SO239 which is female UHF and the male connector is required as a PL259 so that goes on to your cable so that cable uh, you need to select based on uh, how far you go so LM400 has good signal integrity but handling of the cable is tough it is very strong and uh, RG213 is a little bit flexible but good um, the signal integrity is slightly lesser than LM400 so uh, let's proceed folks so for mounting instructions use two clamps uh, loosen this uh, Phillips screws and insert it so that uh, these uh, clamps are aligned and this hole is on the top of uh, everything I mean uh, the setup so what happens here is this will go to the top where the antenna will fix it on the screw and your uh, cable should be passed before fixing the antenna. So now the alignment of this particular setup at the base is you have to put it on a flat surface. So these two are aligned such that there is uh, ample distance between the uh, two clamps so that it holds with uh, right force and uh, you can tighten this once they are aligned. 
not too much but an ample uh, force yeah take care that with uh, not too much of force is exerted so here folks the antenna has been on the erected on the mast uh, it has been assembled this is diamond x50 and uh, there is a special machine here where you can remove the two bolts and uh, bottom you can loosen it and this comes on a stool so this is what it is uh, making easy to do the maintenance work and uh, this has been done at in the evening today on sunday stay tuned folks so folks uh, there is an obstruction here uh, the antenna should be pulled uh, i mean pushed two inches above so what happens here is there is a white element which is intercepting with the gi pipe so i'll just put it down it's simple open up the two bolts loosen up the strings and this acts as a cantilever and i can rest it on the stool so this is how the maintenance happens so folks uh, this mount is very easy uh, remove the two bolts and uh, it acts as a cantilever this loosen up and this is how it rests on a stool so this is the antenna and what i have to do is uh, there is a section of uh, two inches i will push this up up to two inches and so that the element doesn't interfere with the gi uh, pipe so folks you require uh, three spinners one is the number eight for the radials starting the radials and uh, number 10 for the clamp and the antenna mounting bolt and number 13 for these uh, nuts which are mounted on the base so folks finally the antenna has been erected in a proper way so there is no interception with uh, the element as well as the gi pipe it looks good and yeah there is a cap green color and this is the antenna so folks the lm400 cable has come from the window there is a slight uh, dip there so that there is, there is a rain and uh, water should not seep into the window so now this is going to be connected uh, to a barrel connector and in turn I am taking an RG58 uh, cable which I have uh, been taking down to this point there is a male UHF connector and I have connected a patch cord which is going to the nano VNA so this is just to measure the SWR. Now the SWR measured will be at this entry point, not at the antenna feed. The antenna is after uh, three uh, cables. One is the patch cord. The second one is the RG58, which is two meters. And the RG58 uh, after two meters is connected at the barrel connector, which in turn goes to the LM400. So LM400 goes as a feed point to the antenna. So this transmission channel, uh, will give you the actual SWR which is goes to the radio uh, from this feed point from this feed point not uh, at the antenna feed point so that is what the transmission line uh, I wanted to check it before connecting it to the radio so now uh, there will be a practical uh, value and the theoretical value there will be a lot of differences because of the parameters and also uh, due to the cables and uh, the connectors which are coming into the transmission line so let's check the swr for vhf as well as for uhf so folks uh, the lm 400 uh, cable is 20 meters long and it is going to the rooftop uh, where the antenna has been uh, mounted and uh, you have seen the antenna where it is mounted and uh, that is diamond x uh, 50 so after 20 meters from this point the antenna feed point is on the top so we are going to measure uh, 20 uh, meters plus 2 meters the RG58 and the patch cord so that will be the after these three uh, cables which is at a practical feed point from the radio so folks I am measuring the SWR in VHF uh, band so I set the marker starting lower frequency at 130 megahertz and the stop at uh, 150 megahertz 
so the range is 130 to 150 megahertz within which uh, the ham band lies so at 140 I'm going towards that yeah so this is I'm going towards this 141 142 144 so this is at 144 megahertz I have an SWR of 1.3851 so going towards above to 146 so ending point of the hem band is like 1.4212 is the swr so the, here i felt that is a huge dip this is outside the ham band because this is actually a commercial antenna and if you see that 141.600 uh, the SWR is pretty good that is 1.1741 so that is not only one thing is the factor and there's a patch code again I said it's connected to the uh, male UHF and female UHF connecting to uh, the RG58 uh, cable the RG58 cable is going toward to the radio from this point but uh, this RG58 cable at the other end after 2 meters is connected to the barrel connector it is connecting in turn to the LM400 cable which is the feed point after 20 meters to the antenna. So this is the 2 uh, meter uh, wavelength uh, SWR calculated in this band uh, within 144 to 146 uh, megahertz. So uh, the other one which I am going to do is the 70 centimeters uh, a lambda uh, I mean the wavelength for uh, UHF in the next uh, video so folks I'm just measuring the SWR in UHF band uh, I have just set the marker at 430 megahertz and uh, stop at 440 that's the sweep range and ham band lies between these two that is 434 is my interest and 438 is my exit point so let us see what is the SWR at 430 4 megahertz I'm just going towards the 434 four. yeah so this is almost 434 so 434 megahertz gives the stability 1.2985 and uh, where is the dip the dip is the best stability I found in 435 So that is 435.4 megahertz 1.0666 yeah so that's the beautiful uh, SWR and going forward at 438 uh, megahertz this is 436 yeah let's see how it is at 436 exactly so 436 is 1.198 SWR and 438 the exit point I want to have is it's getting too hard so on this uh, nano VNA I get at 438 megahertz 1.679 so this is like uh, yeah so that's a pretty much uh, SWR range so most of the ham bands fall within uh, the I mean near to the dip so there is no problem for the SWR so we are not going much higher so 434 and 436 uh, points are pretty good and I believe uh, this uh, antenna is going to do justice for UHF band as well now yeah so that's uh, I have uh, the patch cord which is going to the barrel connector uh, that's a PL connector, not the barrel connector, PL uh, 259 and PL 239. Uh, sorry, SO239, that's male and female here connectors. And one, uh, the male of the UHF goes to the other barrel connector of uh, uh, where, the, where the LM400 is connected. So there are uh, three cables here in uh, vicinity. So that's why that will be change in the SWR because this is not the direct antenna field. An antenna is at after 20 meters of this cable plus the patch cord is approximately 2 meters 22. Uh, yeah, so that's the case and still the SWR is pretty good.